Hello everyone, it's Benny, and welcome back to the audio programming tutorial series. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to set up the programming project, the one that we're going to be writing all our code in and just generally using throughout the rest of the series. And I'm also going to talk a little bit about some debugging tools that I've provided to make your lives a little bit easier, make it a little bit easier to debug some issues you might encounter while following this tutorial series. So first off, let's talk about project setup. To make your lives easier, I've gone ahead and I've done as much of the project setup for you as I possibly can. And it's all contained in this GitHub repository. I'll leave a link to it in the description. You will want to follow that link because I'll actually be changing it over time for reasons that I'll talk about in a moment. And yeah, just download this GitHub repository. You can either clone it with this link, or you can just download it in a zip file. Either way, it works just fine. And yeah, there you go. You've got 90% of the project setup done for you. For the other 10%, you'll want to follow these instructions. You'll want to install the build dependencies. You'll need, at least right now, you'll need CMake, SDL2, and any one of these build systems, whether it be Visual Studio, CodeBlocks, Xcode, or make and some compilers. So yeah, that's all you'll need to install yourself. And just want to make this clear, if you happen to run into an issue while installing CMake or SDL2 or one of these, please go ask them, not me. <laughs> because, you know, I'm not them. I'm not an expert on these things. I, so yeah, ask them about that, not me. <laughs> oh, and because someone asked me about it, for Visual Studio, there is an express version of Visual Studio that's absolutely free. The, you do not have to buy one of the big fancy versions of it. The express version, which is absolutely free, works fine. So if you want to use Visual Studio, there you go. So that's... So, once you download the project and install your build dependencies, all you have to do, follow the build instructions for your particular operating system. So, and there you go. And, like I s briefly mentioned earlier, I am going to be changing these over time to make any small corrections that I, you know, for errors I might have in here. And that's why the link's going to be changing. So, this is important. If I say anything in this video that contradicts what's in the build instructions, trust the build instructions. They're more up-to-date than my voice right now. <laughs> so, finally, that, yeah, that's really all the rest of project set up. Just download the repository, download and install the build dependencies, follow the instructions. And just to give you an idea of what it's like, at least as of right now, again, trust the instructions over what I'm doing here. Since I'm on Linux, I'll go ahead and generate a code box project. So there's a shell script for this. I'm just going to double click and run. And by the way, this once I've extracted it from the zip file and what whatnot. And yeah, so if I go in the build folder, that generates a code box project I can open. And it'll take a while to load. But once it has loaded, all I have to do, switch the target to the audio project, build, run, there you go. Hello world. That's all the code I have in there right now. The code really here is just something that, that lets you know, hey, the project has been set up correctly. So don't worry too much about the code. We'll talk more about that in future videos. But yeah, I'll go ahead and clean that up. So there, that's project setup. So, now I'd like to talk a bit about debugging. Throughout this tutorial series, chances are at some point you're going to run into some small bug. And I've provided a few tools, or at least I'm going to be providing a few tools, to make your life a little bit easier when that happens. In the description of every video after this one, there will be three links. One will be to a GitHub repository, just like this, where you can download the code, my version of the code, before that tutorial. I'll leave a second link where you can download my version of the code after that particular tutorial. So, And finally, I'll be leaving a link that gives you a line-by-line -line breakdown of every single code change that I made in that particular video. So, yeah. 
and show you what that looks like if I go here. By the way, this is how you can get to it manually. If you go onto the project, click this commits here. I'll be naming my commits things like updated for tutorial 2 or updated for tutorial 10. So just click on the one that you're interested in, and there you go. Line by line breakdown, everything that was changed. In this case, it's not much, just something to show you that it, there are indeed changes, but, but yeah. So just want to make sure you're aware of that to try and make debugging easier. Also, one more thing I'd like to mention before I go. I know that I have some viewers who like to follow along with my tutorials in different programming languages than the one I use for the tutorial. For example, this series is in C++. At least I'm going to be coding in C++. Those people might instead try following along in, say, Java or Python. And I usually try and design my tutorial series so that doing something like that is relatively easy. At least as easy as something like that is going to be. But for this series, I just wanted to mention that doing something like that might be a little bit more difficult than it usually is. For the first part of this tutorial series, you're really going to need to use SDL to follow along. SDL2 specifically. So if you are interested in following along in a different programming language for whatever reason, then you're really going to need to use a language with an SDL2 binding. If your favorite programming language doesn't have that, or it's otherwise more difficult, I recommend just biting the bullet and following along in C++. Just wanted to mention that. So, that's everything for this video. If you have any questions or issues, feel free to post them in the comments, and I will try my best to help you if I can. And, yeah, so thank you. Hope you enjoyed. Hope you learned. And in the next video, we're really going to get into the fun stuff. So, thank you, and see you then.